First thing I want to say is, um, this is my very first PowerPoint, so um, forgive me if I kind of go on and on. I'll try to make it as entertaining as I can. My child helped me with it, so the next slides will have pictures and it'll be more exciting, I think. Um, I'm gonna talk through it. Uh, and the first thing that I wanna say is when you make a career decision, you, you always have to make a tentative plan. A tentative plan means, or tentative, that word means um, that it's, it might work out or it might not. So it's just like, a okay, we're gonna try this and see how it works because you can't just kind of make a plan and then go do it. You have to test it out, right? And you test it out a lot of ways, by mostly by reading about careers, by talking to people about careers, and by actually doing something in that career field um, so that you can figure out if that's gonna be a good fit for you and, um, and the career that you're looking at. Yes? What if you base the career on your passion? That's good, but you still have to base it on, uh, that's really interest, what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that you're getting what you were way ahead of me. So let me just say that um, that's true. You, you have to base it on your interests and on your abilities and on your values. And one of your values can be I want some money. All right. So we'll, we'll kind of go through all those kind of steps and you'll see how it kind of all fits together. All right. And I'll give you some tools to use to kind of sort out those different uh, areas. OK. OK. So. I guess I just have to click and we'll see. I just said this, now I'm gonna say it again. <laughs> I want you to think about looking at your interests and I'll tell you how to do that on the next slide. You also, and, and actually that's, the first thing you do is you look at the world of work and your interests and that's gonna narrow things down for you if you only look at things that interest you. Actually, they'll probably narrow it down to here, okay? Then what you'll do is you'll think about what are my abilities, what are my gifts, what can I do well? And that's going to narrow it down further, okay? And then the last one is figuring out your values. What kinds of things do you value? Do you value a lot of money in your job? Or is it more important to give something to the community? Is it more important to work um, with animals or people or the outdoors? Or what, what, what is important to you about where you work and how you work, okay? So those are the three things that we do to kind of narrow it down for people. Um, it's, uh, it'll, you'll see in a minute how we do that. So let me keep going. Okay, so I want you to think about the world of work. All jobs are made up of some combination of interests that you have in either working with data, things, ideas, or people. Okay, so you might want to make a, a little note on your paper right now. Which of those things do you like to work with? Do you, work, do you like working with data? That's kind of like numbers, facts, um, information that you would write down and keep track of. Things are working with things. <laughs> um, things you can, yeah, using your hands to build things, to make things, to repair things, to construct things. That's what uh, um, things means in this, in this kind of idea. And then ideas are, do you like thinking about different things? Different ways to approach a problem, different ways to um, maybe teach someone something, uh, different ways to, to do things. Those are all ideas or ways of using ideas to help you in a job, okay? And people, do you like working with people? So it, there's a lot of people-oriented jobs, and some jobs you need very little contact with people. So you know, sometimes you may think to yourself, you know, I'm not real thrilled with people. I'd rather just kind of work by myself in a corner. Well, then maybe you can be an accountant or a bookkeeper. You'd still interact with people during your day, but you wouldn't do that. Um, you wouldn't do it all the time. You'd mostly be working with, uh, with um, data. So I want you to, if you rank order those things that I gave you, the four things, right? Data, what were they? Data, things, ideas, people, good. Okay, rank order them and you kind of have a rough idea of the pattern of interests you have. So which thing is most important to you? Write that down first. And the thing that's next important to you, write that down. And then what's the third one? And then what's the final one? 
okay? That's one way to look at your pattern of interest. Okay, so you've all kind of done that. The other way, and the other thing you might add to it is further rate them from one to 10 to, to tell me or tell yourself how important that is to you. Like, yeah, I like working with people, but I'd, maybe I'd only rate that a seven. It wouldn't be a 10. Maybe I like ideas, that's maybe a three. But you know, you can, you can also rate them that way. So give them a number and that will give you just another idea of the relative strength or how strongly you want uh, to do that thing. Okay. All righty. To figure out the fit between your interest pattern, and this is really the first thing you do and the most important thing you do, to figure out your, uh, the fit between your interest pattern and a potential job or career choice, you're going to need to figure out that interest pattern, usually from testing. Usually we give people some sort of interest testing, and I'll, I'll, that'll be on the next slide here in a bit. And you might rank order your interests, and you also could complete online assessments. So I've just told you how to kind of rank order your interests, okay? And then I'm gonna, now I'm gonna tell you um, a little bit about online assessments and testing. And there's some things you can do that are free and some things that will cost a little bit of money, okay? You don't have to do the things that cost a lot of money, but, but, if, you, um, but if you want to, you can. Okay. Another thing to remember is if you're consistent across all those kind of measures, and usually I have people do more than one thing, then we know that you're on the right track, that you're searching in the right direction, okay? So if I ask you, you know, do you like working with people, things, ideas, or data, and you tell me, oh, I, wanna, I like working with people, and then I have you take an interest inventory, and that also says, yeah, you like working with people-oriented kinds of jobs, then I would say to you, yeah, then let's go. That's the right way for you to be searching, the right way, the right direction to be looking in. Okay, but if they're not consistent, if they're not the same, then I have to ask more questions <laughs> and do more testing and work with you more to see what other possibilities we might want to consider. Okay. Okay, so here it is. It's all written down for you. In this thing called WOICE, Washington Occupational Information System, is something that the college buys every year. So we buy the option to go onto this website, and here you'll find free career interests and skill assessment and work importance or a values assessment, all free. You can do this from home if you have a computer at home. You can also do it here in the library or you know, a computer center if you want to stay on campus and do it during the day here. Or actually, you could do it at night, if before or after this class. So you would go to the website there that I wrote, www.voice.org, and use the site key to, to get into it if you're going into it from off campus. Okay? A site key is just like a password. All right? Yes. Is that the same website, uh, Workforce Musician? For what? Workforce. No. We're they also have a career assessment. Yes, they do. And um, they, they have a different one called Job Fit, I think. It's also from the Voice. Oh, it is from Moise? OK. I'm not as thrilled with the stuff that they use. I don't think it does as good a job. Um, but, but like I said, if you can use that one, use this one, may, and maybe even do a um, a, a paid one and compare the, the kind of pattern. If it's giving you the same information, then I'd go with it, okay? So usually things, remember, like your parents tell you or your grandparents tell you, things that are free are worth what the, you pay for them, right? So sometimes paying a little money gets you a little bit better information, but, um, but I've had things on voice turn out okay, so I don't want to discourage you from using that. That would be the first step to, to you do. The cool thing about voice, and let me just stay on that a minute, is that voice is really geared towards the, all of us who live in Washington State. And what it will give you besides free testing is it'll give you printouts of different occupations. So you can go in there and type in teacher or accountant or nurse or doctor, whatever you want, and it will give you an eight page printout 
of the kinds of job duties that position does. It'll tell you um, what you need to do to prepare for that occupation. It'll tell you how much money you will get. It'll tell you a list of related careers. So if you don't want to do that career, but maybe a different one, but still in that same field, it'll tell you where else to search. Yes? Would you that information uh, prior to taking the assessment? Or yes. So if you already know what you want to do and you don't want to waste time doing that stuff, you just go in and it has a little search box on the front page. Just type your occupation in there and it'll give that to you. And then I usually print that out for students when they come to my office and just give them that because it just has a lot of good stuff in it. Um, in fact, just about anything you can think of, it has in it. So, so that's a good resource. Um, other things that people use are they use the... Here I've abbreviated it, because it's not my favorite. <laughs> the Myers-Briggs Type Indicator, we have that in the Counseling Center. Um, these three things cost money here. Um, we have that, and we have a newly revised strong or a career assessment inventory. Those three things are all $20.50 each. Um, the Myers-Briggs gives you um, a Myers-Briggs Type, so it will give you some information back about whether you're um, extroverted or introverted, how you take in information in the world through your senses, uh, or whether you're in, uh, ec um, intuitive about that. It'll tell you how you make decisions. It'll tell you, you know, just how you kind of perceive the world around you and work. And those personality types that people have are also tied to certain job families. So we can use that to kind of predict where you might do the best in terms of a fit between your personality and your job that you're looking at. The strong is the kind of the um, I want to say it's kind of like the standard in the field. So everything else, every other uh, interest assessment in the world is compared to the strong because it's kind of like what we call the gold standard. It's the best one we have to predict your pattern of interests and how those match the pattern of interests of people that are already working in certain careers. Okay? And that's really important because if you get into a career that you're, as you said, passionate about, then you're going to like that job. It's not going to feel like work to you. It's going to feel like fun. And you're going to be a better worker. So your boss will like you. You will like your work. Your other co colleagues and coworkers will like you. And it'll be really a nice fit. Okay, So that's why I always think it's good to just kind of get the best placement you can. Okay. The career assessment inventory is pretty much similar to the strong, but what it does is it predicts, um, or it not predicts, but it shows the fit between your interests and two-year college degrees. So the strong does four-year college degrees, and the strong and the career assessment does two-year degrees. So, and I can kind of go back and forth between them. So if you take one, you don't really need to take the other. I can kind of show you what the two-year equivalent is of a four-year degree. Or if you want to get a two-year degree first and then look at four-year options for later, we can work that way as well. Okay. So again, those are your, those are your options that you have here at Highline. And I just encourage you to do, you know, voice because, hey, it's free. And, um, and you get some information. And if you want more, then you can come see me or one of the other counselors. OK? All right. Yeah, what time did your office open? Our office is open from 8 in the morning until uh, 5. Um, if, you, if you are an evening student only and you can't possibly come in during the day, um, email me and we can figure something out. Because you can, you can take the strong, actually, in the Myers-Briggs. You take that online anyway. And then I go and get it offline. And then I just need to do a, like a one hour uh, test interpretation with a student. So if you can't get off work to come do that, then we can figure something out. OK. All right. <laughs> well, we'll, well, we're, we'll work on that. OK. So this next section, remember I said you go from interests down to abilities, skills, gifts. Um, so you can use the skills assessment from WOICE, the Washington Occupational Information System, to meet, um, or you can meet with me to talk about your skills, abilities, and gifts. Sometimes it's helpful to make a list of what things you know you're good at. Um, 
and what maybe family or friends have said about your talents. Um, some people are really good with other folks. Like my kid has way better social skills than I do. I know she's going to be good working with people. She also loves animals. Um, and she's very good at writing. She writes way better than I do sometimes. So that's a little frightening. But she's not so hot at math. So she's probably not going to become an engineer. You know, probably not, because you need good skills for that. Or you need to be able to work really hard to get past you know, a couple, couple quarters of calculus. <laughs> so think about what your skills are. Um, if you have uh, people skills, math skills, music skills, here I put uh, Japanese, Chinese. Um, if you have any kind of language skills, you know, if you speak more than one language, that is something that you want to build on and use because um, more and more that's becoming important when people make hiring decisions, okay? In all jobs, in all parts of our um, community, okay? So think about that if you have that and make sure you write it on your resume or your Vita. Okay, work values. This, this handout is kind of really exhausting. Um, um, and it's more than what's here on the sheet. Uh, but let me just tell you that uh, values are things that are important to you in a job or career. So I put money first because usually that's the first thing people talk about. Am I going to get enough money to live, um, to have things I want in my life? Um, what, what do I need? What do I need to live? You know, sometimes you'd be surprised how little money you need, especially if you're partnered or married uh, or living with someone in a co-housing situation. You might not need as much, but we all need some, right? So we want to be thinking about that. Do you want to work indoors or outdoors? Do you want your work to be varied? Do you want to work alone or with a team of folks? What about flexibility, setting your own schedule? Is prestige important to you? I know when I, when I first came to get a job here, I actually could have had a job at the University of Washington or here, and I chose here because, believe it or not, even though the UW was more important sounding, Highline paid me more money. So I came here instead. So, <laughs> pardon? <laughs> yeah, so you know, you make some decisions about how important prestige is to you, you know? Or is money more important? So those things, you'll kind of weigh them out. Do you want to be in academia or school or a business setting? What is important to you? So I have a whole list of things here. You can go down them at your leisure. And you know, maybe, uh, maybe your instructor would like to see the results of that in your part of your paper. Maybe, I don't know. That just gives you some ideas about things you can put in there, all right? When you're thinking about the areas that you want to look at. OK, so ah, narrow down the choices. So you're going to go like this, and then like this, and then like this. You're still going to have um, a lot of choices left. You know, Probably you'll have 40 to 50 things on a list when you get done doing an interest inventory. And so how do you then decide what to do? Well, I tell people to make a list of them and just read the titles of the jobs. And if something sounds interesting to you, then you need to read about different careers or related careers, OK? So reading is the first thing. When you, when you learn about anything, you have to read about it, right? That makes sense. So you read about it first, and then exclude choices that don't make yet use of your gifts or your values, OK? And then you, and then, you, know, you might make a tentative choice, like, Hmm, maybe I'll do teaching. Hmm, or maybe I'll do um, something in the medical field, but I'm not sure what. Okay, but you want to narrow it down a little bit. So this is kind of important. So you don't just read about stuff to verify your choice or to make sure your choice is a good one. You don't just read about something, but you go and talk to people who are doing that. I see somebody nodding their head. You've, maybe you've done that already. Yeah, so, and the reason you talk to people, let me explain why that's important. Because sometimes in books and even in papers, they don't always tell you the truth about what the job is like when you get there, okay? So you might train for something in school, and then when you get on the job, it's not exactly the way they said it was gonna be. So if you talk to people who are already doing that job, you can find out you know, what is the garbage work associated with that job 
And let's be real, all jobs have parts of them that are not fun, okay? Even if you are like a really Im supposedly important person and have this big job and you get paid a lot of money, there's still some parts to your job that are not fun that you have to do. Everybody has them. And if you know what those are ahead of time, then it's going to be a lot easier choosing um, to do something because you won't be surprised when you get there, right? You'll be like, oh, yeah, I remember this part, OK? So I'm going to give you another handout. <laughs> I promise there'll only be one more after this. And this is handouts called Interview with a Worker. Now, I'm not assigning you this for homework, but I'm just saying that uh, it might be a good idea when you talk to the person to find out um, you know, a little bit about their job, how they got into the job, what kind of training they got, what do they like about it, what do they not like, those kinds of things. What advice would they give to somebody going into that field? What kind of connections or networks can you use to get the ball rolling? Those kinds of things. OK, so um, usually what, we, what I tell people to do is um, to either make a cold call. Do you know what a cold call is? It's when you, when you call somebody that you don't know. And, um, and you introduce yourself and say, you know, for my class um, at a local community college, I'm needing to uh, meet with someone and do an informational interview to find out more about this profession to decide whether or not I'm going to go into it. Would you mind if I came and talked to you for an hour or, you know, bought you a cup of coffee or, you know, took you to lunch or something and just ask you some questions about your job so that I can, you know, make a decision if this is the career area I want to go in. Most people love to talk about themselves, so they'll say yes to you, right? They'll want to do that because it's going to be fun and they'll feel important. So you can do that kind of thing, or you can maybe talk to a faculty advisor on campus who is teaching or working in that area that you're thinking about going into. OK, that's a, that's an easier option. But sometimes that doesn't give you the breadth of what you might like. OK. OK, so other things that I tell people to do. Remember, you're going to read about careers. You're going to talk to people about careers. And then you're going to actually try it out. OK, so trying it out, you can do the following things. You can do job shadowing, which is basically you Ask someone if you can be their little shadow all day long, and you kind of walk around with them or behind them and see what they do for maybe not all day, maybe for a couple hours or maybe all day. And then you go home and ask yourself, could I see myself doing this kind of work? Is this something that would you know, be a good fit for me? Do I, do I think this is a good fit here? So that might give you some more information about whether or not that would work. You can also volunteer. Um, I know I, I thought I wanted to work with kids when I was growing up, so I volunteered in the summer working with kids. And even though I have a child right now of my own, I did discover that I did not like working with kids. <laughs> I, I like working with adults better, okay? That doesn't mean I can't be a mom if I don't like kids. It just means that I'm not, I don't want 30 of them, okay? In a classroom, that's not me, okay? But that's why you volunteer, because you want to... You know, you want to find out if, that's, if it's going to be a good thing or not. So some things can sound good, but then when you go do them, they aren't that fun. OK, so remember that. Um, community service. You can do some community service. Um, sometimes we go and you know, feed um, the homeless people in my community at the fire station and do meals and cooking. I like doing community service, but I don't think I want to cook for a job. You know? So you can, find, uh, you can try out different things by doing community service. Also by doing practicum or what people call field work or uh, cooperative education, you can do that in a college and get credit for working outside you know, with a classroom that will actually tell you whether or not that's something you want to do. Okay? Um, and I think I put down internships. So you, you have to do some kind of some level of trying things out to see if that's going to work for you. Okay. OK, still on the handout. Other ideas. So sometimes people do what's called an externship. It's the same thing as an internship. You just do it after you get your degree. OK? So like if you didn't do an internship before you got your degree, and then you get your degree and you go, oh, no, I can't get a job, 
then sometimes people do an externship. So, and that can be either paid or unpaid. Um, but, you know, think about that. Another thing to do is to look for a summer program in the field you're going into, um, either between semesters or quarters or um, in the summer. Now, I've found a whole lot of summer jobs um, with actually um, Washington, with Washington State in the summer, the Department of Natural Resources and Department of Wildlife and Fisheries, and there's a whole bunch of different state departments that take summer interns. And some of those are paid positions. They don't pay you a whole lot, but you know, it's nice to have a little bit of money, gas money at least. So you might look at those kinds of places um, and you know, just kind of uh, see what, what's available for you. Um, I know that the uh, sometimes the UW has summer programs uh, to orient students um, college age, but also younger, uh, younger uh, students in high school and junior high to the sciences and to medical school. So you might think about those kind of options, what's available. You can also work in the field in an entry level job and just kind of test it out, see if that's for you or not. Um, when I came back from graduate school and I didn't have a job, um, I worked for my dad for a little while. He taught me how to kind of do the books. I wasn't really good at that. <laughs> so, you know, that gave me an idea of like, no, no, I need to go back to working with people. It's not going to work for me to do this. So, so it's good to try an entry level job sometimes to sort stuff out. You can also take extra courses or, you know, once you get your degree, take an extra couple classes in different subject areas to kind of get you, you know, a little bit more skill or a little bit more, um, uh, practice in certain areas. A lot of people do that with computers or with um, uh, computer packages or with um, um, accounting skills, that kind of thing. And then you have to reevaluate if the fit is right. Figure out if that's going to be a good, a good thing for you or not. Okay, so the last thing to do is you can come and see a career counselor. You can come and see uh, me or one of the other three folks in our counseling center. There's Patricia, Tressa, and Lance, and I. Um, and we can kind of help maybe get you on track wherever you are in that career decision kind of making uh, place. So drop by or call us. Let me take you back then to this World of Work map. It should be a one-page handout you have here. And remember I said that um, people, data, things, and ideas are the four ways you can kind of look at interest areas. Here you can see on this circle that the world of work really is broken up into, into these four areas and then how the four areas overlap with each other. So if you think you like data and things, you might be in a computer operation or business machine area, or you might be in a um, vehicle operations and repair area. Um, if you like things, you might be construction and maintenance. If you're people, you might be education and related services, healthcare, social and government services. But see, it has, it has a whole lot of areas here to look at. It also has um, this thing uh, called uh, RIASEC. It's another, it's a way to think about the world of careers. There, there are also another six job families that some people use to look at. And those are realistic careers or hands-on kinds of careers where you build things, make things. Um, uh, I'm spacing out what the I is for. Um, investigative careers, which are science careers and math careers, where people always want to know why. They're, they're the people who walk around with that two-year-old question, why, did, why is the sky blue? Why do you know birds fly? They want to know how things work, OK? Um, and that's what they're interested in. Um, a stands for artistic. You can see these letters going around the, the kind of the inside of, um, or just outside the white circle part. So A stands for artistic. It's not just people that go into the arts, into drama and you know uh, graphic arts, but it's people who have novel and new ideas, ways of looking at the world, or being any kind of creative take on something. Okay. So those folks, um, there are careers specifically for folks that want that area. Or that, that, uh, that part can cool, like, the type of Yes. Yes, it would. Okay. 
Um, S is for social, so that's teaching, helping careers, medical fields sometimes fit in there. Um, uh, e is for um, enterprising, or what we used to think of as business careers. Okay, folks that like to buy things, sell things, persuade people, um, work with folks to make the economy go. So if you're one of those kind of folks, that's a career area you might go into. And the C stands for conventional. Those are folks who usually work in companies or offices, and they are the people that hold us together. They're the people who are very organized and orderly, and everything for them needs to be in a place. And they're the kind of folks that file things, keep track of things, project managers, people that kind of get us moving on things. So that's kind of just a rough overview of, of kind of the six uh, job families that you'll get feedback from when you take the strong interest inventory. But we also have a way of looking at them, different jobs by looking at data, people, um, ideas, and things. So this, this gives you just a rough idea of what's out there. And then your job is to kind of, again, narrow it down so that you can, pardon? I, investigative. So they want to know why things happen, the cause and effect kind of people. Oh, okay. Like, um, like <laughs> um, actually, they'd probably be more under, uh, more under uh, conventional types, but they need to have some S in them to, to work with people. And maybe a little bit of I, because yeah, they'd want to know a little bit. But yeah, why are things going on? Why are things happening the way they are? But mostly, I think of investigative jobs as being science and math focused. Yeah. Can we give Gloria a hand? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate coming here today.